This video is brought to you by Brooklinen. Hey there, I don't know what to make this week, but I must say I do currently find myself getting that feminine urge to look like a really well upholstered piece of Victorian furniture. So friends, let's go to the thrift store and see what we can find. Hello there, it's day one and I am here to try to procure some fabrics. I'm going to find some kind of fabric or material that I think is interesting that I would like to wear on my body and then I'm gonna turn it into something. Probably a corset because, mm -hmm. hey man, let's be honest, that's basically all I ever make. Let's do it. Once inside, I was greeted with many tempting wares, but I stayed on task and made it to the fabric section, where I was once again greeted with a tempting floral medley, but there was one particular fabric that stole my heart wow. and set it down gently on a comfortable and stylish chair. Mission accomplished. I also got a little sidetracked by this cabinet that looks like something I would find in the Elder Scrolls Online, so naturally. So it turns out that cabinet was for sale, and it was $17. So I bought it. <laughs> And why, you ask, was this cabinet so important for me to have? I needed a place to put all my snacks. Okay, so now that I've collected some fabric and a beautiful brand new cabinet that I didn't need, but also kind of really did need, let's see about some kind of design. Even though a lot of you have already seen the design for this last week. Again, I basically already explained this design, but if you're new here, we're going for a lace-up waistcoat with long coattails and a high collar. Something that really reads equal parts vampire, pirate, and beautiful Victorian chair. And in normal people terms, something that works for both Whimsigoth and Renfair looks. Hence the fringe and the lace-up detail. I don't know, it's a lot, but it's kind of a look. So unfortunately, I did not get started on this project that night because I had, you know, other obligations and work things to do. But I did get started the next morning after taking a luxurious slumber on my brand new Brooklyn and sheets because Brooklinen is the kind sponsor of this video. So y'all know that I've been talking about beautifying my space a little bit more. Ignore the background here. It's a work in progress. There's so much in here that I've had in high school and I'm cheap and I have a hard time justifying investing in nice things. Yet I will spend $100 on Warbla to make a sword that I don't need. But you know, I'm trying to change that. So when Brooke Lennon reached out, I was like, okay, yes. Brooke Lennon is a luxury home goods company that specializes in high quality bedding and bed sheets to help elevate your space, which is exactly what I need. They are founded on the philosophy that people deserve simple Simple, beautiful home essentials at an affordable price, which I think is just fantastic because making your home beautiful is the ultimate form of self-care. And you literally spend a third of your life asleep in sheets, so I think that we all deserve that hotel quality bedding every single night of our lives. It is also so important to not only invest in sheets that are going to last a long time, but also get softer with each wash to give you the best possible night's sleep. And instead of buying individual items, you can save 25% by purchasing a classic or luxe hardcore bundle. The luxe is the beautiful bundle I received. It includes a core sheet set, extra pillowcases, and a duvet cover. Brooke Lennon's best-selling luxatine sheets are the ultimate bedding upgrade. Perfect for elevating your sheet game, these sheets feature a luxurious 480 thread count and a slightly luminous finish. Sateen is usually more tightly woven and heavier in weight than percale, making it warmer and buttery soft ideal for year-round comfort. You can also choose to mix and match 20 plus colors and patterns to fit your particular style. I got the Luxe Hardcore Bundle in a combo of cream and basil because I'm a forest person and I want to feel like I'm sleeping on a bed of moss. Listen to the texture. What do you think? She likes them. Ooh. How to prove. Very important part of any purchase. You can shop for your Brooklinen Classic or Luxe Hardcore Bundle from the comfort of your home. And you can shop Brooklinen's birthday sale, which is their biggest sale of the year, and get 25% off your order by clicking my link here and in the description. And if you're watching this video after May 3rd, you can still get a discount by using my promo code PRICKLYALPACA for $20 off a purchase over $100. Thank you so much to Brooklinen for kindly sponsoring this video. Now back to the Kira who makes things. I am gonna take a nap. 
Hello, it is day one. And as usual this morning, I'm gonna be working on some patterning stuff. As I showed y'all, I went to the thrift store and got this beautiful brocade fabric. I don't even know what it is. What is this shape? I, I genuinely don't know what's going on here. If someone knows what this actually was, please let me know in the comments because I was like, oh, it's a table runner, but it's got this like curved pattern to it. I don't understand. Anyways, because of that, this particular piece of fabric is extremely weird. It's not square. I'm gonna have to factor that into how I pattern this because a dog is interrupting me. The thing about brocades is you want all of your pattern pieces to line up so that it doesn't look extremely weird. So that's another problem that we have to deal with today. So thankfully past Kira found it in her to be at least a little bit organizational and actually have some pre-made corset patterns. So what I'm thinking is we use my Victorian style corset pattern that I used for my tree corset thing. It's pretty long. It comes up to here and then goes down to about my natural hip line. And then it does have hip spring, which is an important part of this design. And then I can drape some kind of like shoulder piece and back piece piece for it. And then I was a little worried about having enough fabric because this is a long piece, but it kind of comes down to where I wanted it to in my design. But then I was looking at it and this whole seam here has been folded over. So theoretically, I should be able to seam rip all of this off and have a piece that's like basically double wide this. And between the two pieces that I have, because I do have two of these, I should be able to cut all of the corset bodice pieces. I'm just going to take this whole big long piece here that's already got the tassels on it, pattern this for the hip spring, cause it's already kind of the perfect shape and it already drapes basically the way that I want it to. And then I don't have to worry about finishing almost any of this. Am I gonna look a little bit like somebody's weird chair that they've had since the early 1900s? Yes. Hey bitch, it's me, yo chair. I am also 100% okay with that. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time today, so we just need to go and do it. Let's make this very unnecessary garment. I gotta clean up my sewing room because this place is a mess. 10 points to anyone who can guess what this abomination is. I wonder what that is. I wonder what Kira's up to. It's also the reason why my sewing room is a mess. Okay, now we can begin. Skills fail me. Okay, I didn't find the fabric I was looking for, but I did find this whole like black leather fabric left over from oh, high school. No. I don't know, like I think it could work, but it's definitely a look. This would be a very decisive choice. I also found something that I just need to show you. Okay, I know this looks like literally nothing, but this is a pirate coat project left over from high school and like Girl, what were you even trying to do? When I say high school, I mean like probably junior high. I was an actual baby that had just started sewing and I had no idea what I was doing. But just to show you guys this full experience. What was I going for? How did I think this was going to work? It's it's cute, but I, I just thought that I could take two jackets from the thrift store and just like sew them together. And seeing as how I never finished this, I'm pretty sure early on in this project, I realized like, hey, this <laughs> is a bad idea. Also, what exactly is this? It looks like I spilled paint all over this. I like to think that I've come a long way in sewing since I started doing nonsense like this. Anyways, comment below if you want to see me like maybe rescue this at some point because I think that might be kind of fun to start out from the worst possible product and try to arrive somewhere that's like reasonable. Anyways, I'm stalling again because I have to do mock-ups and I don't feel like it. <laughs> Let's do this. are with the mock-up. I think it's actually looking pretty good. Very defined hip curve here, which hopefully will be where this can just naturally kind of be attached. So far, the way that's patterned like actually looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take that and try it on my body and make sure it actually fits. And then we can get to cutting out the pieces and actually sewing this thing. We gotta hurry, this ain't time for messing around. Time to seam rip all of this. So for some reason, I thought seam ripping this was gonna be really difficult, but it turns out... Wasn't 
that bad. I highly recommend seam ripping fabrics if you just have a lot of internal rage. Also, I know some of you are gonna think this is a little weird, but I think I might actually do this like bias cut. I don't think cutting on the straight grain actually adds enough to this design to warrant having to like piece all of this together and have seams in weird places. Okay. <laughs> This took forever, as usual. Uh, uh, I want to mark my seam allowance and, you know, be careful so it doesn't turn out looking like all types of trash. So now I, I just have a ton of pinning to do. Riveting content. So I pinned everything together and basically went super fast with sewing up my layers because it was getting late and the obscene amount of coffee I had consumed was wearing off. I got the outer layer completely sewn together, including the tails, which wow, efficiency, we love that. And I did the same with the red lining layer, meaning by the end of the night, this thing was coming together pretty quickly. However, after that, I ate too many carbs and promptly fell asleep, meaning that now it was the next and final day. It's day two. I wasn't really planning on having a day two. I was, I was really gonna try to like power through all of this last night. I just got super tired. I did get a decent amount of progress though. So today we just really have like finishings to do. So I'm gonna try to like really quickly do that. Let's go and be productive. My second day began with gratuitous ironing. Once again, a step completely initiated on my own accord without any coercion whatsoever. That was followed up by diligent pinning and sewing of trim on to pleather color pieces, which with my sewing machine is one of the most anxiety inducing things ever. It was so nerve wracking in fact, that when it came time to sew the standing color onto my waistcoat, I opted for hand sewing because why risk it? Sorry, I need to sew a little baby. Thankfully, the executive producer was kind enough to lend me her moral support, however distracting that was. This was followed up by, you guessed it, more pinning, so that I could finish up all the raw edges of the waistcoat by adding some shiny ribbon to act as a bias tape. And as this was the final sewing task of the project, I naively thought I was on the home stretch. But Herbert had other plans. Herbert is the name of my sewing machine, by the way. I just thought of it right now because it sounds stupid. Hi. So this project is taking me so much longer than it should because I keep having sewing machine jam problems. I have done everything that I know to do whenever the sewing machine jams to like fix the problem. I've cleaned out the inside. It seems like it's still lubricated, like okay. I changed out the needle. I just genuinely don't know what is causing the issue. Like I'm trying to sew through this right now. Not a difficult material to sew through at all. Like I've sewed through more difficult materials with this machine. I just have no idea what's going on and I don't know what to do to finish this up because there's no way that I can hand sew on all of this trim by tomorrow. So I'm going out in a couple of hours. I might go to the fabric store and see if they can tell me anything. Worst case scenario, I might buy a new sewing machine. I just, I'm kind of at a loss. I'm not sure exactly what to do. I will keep you updated. Uh. Hi, so quick update. I texted my friend and I think I should be able to use her sewing machine, which is just like, so in the meantime, I think I'm just gonna try to finish hand sewing on the rest of the collar. I also like am a little bit broken right now. I'm sure that you guys can tell that I'm just like not having a good time out here today. Should have been in theory a really simple project if my sewing machine just worked. Also this faux leather, sucks. I forgot that the reason why high school me hadn't used all of this yet is because it is just a nightmare to sew through. Obviously, it's possible. You can sew through it okay, but my sewing machine also likes to jam whenever I sew through it. Sewing is really fun, you guys. If, you, if you've never sewn before, I recommend it as a hobby. It's just, it's not stressful at all. It's a really good time. 
Okay. So while I stressfully waited till it was time to leave to go have a nice little picnic with my friend and wander from fabric store to fabric store trying to figure out what to do about my sewing machine, I tried to at least get the two lapels hand sewn on in order to do something productive. Hey there, I just found another pen on my floor. Welcome back to I Am Stressed and nothing is going right. So I went to the fabric store and looked at heavy duty sewing machines and the one that I wanted was like $220. And I said, okay, you know what? No. So instead, my amazing friend Eliana has lent us her sewing machine. Everybody say a big thank you to Ellie in the comment section. The producer is clawing at my leg. Um, this week Ellie is the savior of this entire project because otherwise I frankly don't know how I would get all of this stupid trim sewn on. And the fun thing is she has the exact same sewing machine that I have, only it's like way cuter. Not that you can see it because the executive producer has decided that she is going to make everything about her. You are literally perfectly blocking out this beautiful sewing machine, so thank you for that. You want to rub your face on it? <laughs> She does. Yeah, if we could just, you know, just there we go. Look at how cute it is. So this is where we are. Can you guys tell I gave up on the cinematography halfway through this video? I have the trim pinned on. I have most everything sewn on. I went through the painstaking process of hand sewing on these color pieces and everything's like more or less ready to just be finally sewn up. So you might be asking, Hira, why don't you simply just do that? Well, well, the answer is because I don't like it. Something about how I pattern this color just feels off to me. I think it was supposed to cut like more in a diamond shape down the bust and I cut it more just straight across. I don't know. It's it's like, it's giving indecisiveness. I already give indecisiveness enough as a person. I don't need my garments to also communicate that. I can't decide whether it's a corset or a vest and not in a cute way. This might be a really poor decision, but <laughs> you guys, I'm kind of just thinking about ripping these off. Just having like a high staining color and not having like lapel piece or whatever the heck it's called. Cause the other issue is this ugly seam that I hand sewed, fake leather is so difficult to sew through in every way. Daughter, I'm trying to talk to the people. This is so difficult to sew through in every way that this seam looks awful. But now I'm looking at it, I laid some trim across it and I'm like, wait a second, that looks bad. Ow, daughter. Okay, I will pet you. So, I just, I don't know. I feel like I put so much effort into this that I, I should see it out. <sighs> yep, yep, I think I'm just, I'm gonna grab the scissors and I'm gonna make a decisive choice. I mean, ah! Okay, okay, that's not helpful. Stop, stop, stop. That's not good producing. Here we go, we're doing it. This is so difficult to seam rip because my stitch work is awful. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bernadette, I'm not a hand sewer. The funniest part of this entire process is that the executive producer is standing just off camera, like purring loudly. I do enjoy watching me suffer. I'm getting real close to just doing this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There it is. That was an hour of work that I just ripped off. Okay, let's do it again. And there's the other one. It's weird, but a wave of relief washed over me the instant I took these off. It's like, I don't have to deal with this anymore. All right, now we have just like normal trim to deal with. <sighs> I feel better. Um. Let's see how this goes. So I diligently went about sewing on all of that trim and it took a reasonable amount of time. It's wondrous what a functional sewing machine can do for your efficiency. I also added some trim to the front edges where I ripped off the lapels and I was right, it does look better. I also did a bit of nonsense to the bottom hem here but we're not going to discuss that. As usual, I finished it up by throwing some grommets on this thing and the executive producer took a vested interest in my dangerous tools which as always makes the already frustrating process of installing grommets that much more intolerable. At this point I am seriously contemplating getting a grommet press because at some point spending an hour on this every week is just ridiculous. Okay, it's done. It fits. I like it. It's reveal time.
Hello you, yes you, thank you so much for watching. I couldn't have become a chair this week without your viewership, but as always, the biggest thank you goes to my patrons and most especially my executive producers. Cat, Dodo, Zyle S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. What do you think? Not a lot of thoughts, huh? What if I do this with my Oh, she doesn't like that.